So thank you, Matthias, for the kind introduction. And yes, uh, first of all, I would like to, to, thank, to thank the organizer to give me the opportunity to, to present these works and also thank them for this organization of uh, this uh, special workshop. This is really interesting for, for us to, to have a scientific lecture on that kind of subject. So I will talk about uh, uh, magnetic nanocomposite for magnetophotonic devices. So you have uh, my colleagues and your PhD student, and we're also working with engineer. So I am from I am Francois Royer from the University of Saint Etienne. Uh, so the university at the time, the lab, is not so far from this uh, art uh, and design city. So this is quite a, a lovely place uh, in Saint Etienne. Um, sorry. Okay. A few words about the lab. So we are in Saint Etienne here. A uh, few words about the lab. There are about. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, there are about 200 people, 100 permanent people, uh, uh, two departments, a department which relates to computer science and the security image, and another department uh, about optics, photonics, and, and surfaces, and some works are uh, about uh, laser matter interaction to obtain self-organized ripples on, on matter or self or laser-induced self-organized uh, nanoparticles. So, and you can use that kind of device to obtain a colorimetric effect with polarized light, for example. And some of my colleagues also work on diffraction grating. Uh, my group is about magneto optics. And this is uh, so what I, I will talk about today. I will give a scientific context, but it is already, it has already been done by, by Beatrice, it will be short. And I will focus on our approach, which is, which is nanocomposite approach, and show how we have used this specific material to, to integrate it uh, on different kinds of, of device. So um, the sci scientific context is, is uh, the integration of uh, magnetoptical materials on photonic uh, chips. Uh, to realize optical isolator, we need this non-reciprocity, for example, of, of, of garnet. And uh, the difficulty is that you, you need to, to, to have a garnet, you really need to have a high temperature, and this is not so good for uh, optical application or, or, on, a, or, on a device. And um, when you start from uh, this uh, value of Merrick factor, this is uh, the, the ratio between the effect and absorption, it is very high value when uh, the garnet is as bulk, but when it is integrated on a, on a device, the value is really reduced. So it is so difficult to, to keep, in fact, the performance of, of the material when it is uh, on, a, on, on a device. Uh, so people are, are, are doing, this is a challenge, but people are doing. Uh, one method is to use bonding, so this is made in Tokyo or not so far from here in IMEC. Um, molecular bonding or adhesive bonding. So just put, in fact, a, a garnet film on a, on a silicon, for example, chips. Uh, it, it is efficient, but uh, it is not so uh, easy for large integration. Another way is to, to work with a, a classical integration. Uh, this is made, for example, by the MIT using PLD, and they are able to integrate garnet on silicon waveguides here, and um, it it works. They they are able to to do very beautiful isolator, but uh, they can do the isolator, but they cannot realize the isolator with the laser because of the the temperature. So it is a it is quite difficult. So what we have proposed is to use a uh, this kind of uh, approach, uh, this is a composite approach, uh, using a silica type matrix. So this is silica with uh, magnetic nanoparticles inside the silica matrix. Uh, you have that kind of film 
magnetopical film. So we are starting from, uh, this is a, sorry, a sol gel sol uh, method. We are starting from a solution of uh, silica precursor, zirconia or titania precursor. And then we are adding some uh, magnetic nanoparticles as a Hakus ferrofritz in the liquid uh, preparation. So these nanoparticles uh, are made in, uh, in Paris in the laboratoire Phoenix. And then we, we can use uh, this preparation, this uh, liquid preparation to do some deep coating and obtain films on a substrate. And finally, uh, the thermal annealing is quite low, uh, less than 100, uh, 100 degrees. So, sorry. So you have uh, this composite. So this is, uh, you can see that we have uh, silica over there and you can see the, the crystal, the nano crystal with the mean size about 10 nanometer. And as we are using uh, cobalt uh, ferrit nanoparticles, you can, we can guess that we have this, uh, uh, we can say random distribution of uh, single nanoparticles. We do not want to have aggregates. If you have aggregates, it will give large scattering. So uh, one of the job is to, to have a less, uh, less aggregate in, uh, in the film. So the, there are several advantages of this approach because you can finally, you, you can play with the matrix. So you have some interest from the matrix side. This is a low temperature approach. So the material can be easily processed on different kind of photonic substrates, glass, silicone, and gold, and so on. And uh, you can play, you can tune the refractive index playing on the type of pre precursor you are using, silica, titania, and so on. And uh, the value is quite low. So in terms of connection to optical fiber, it's, uh, it's more interesting. Uh, you can also use a photosensitive matrix to obtain later some uh, micro structuration uh, using a classical UV exposure. And you, you will see that this uh, matrix one of uh, the matrix is also able to, uh, to fill slits in pregnant, impregnate sorry, some uh, micro templates. Uh, here is typically some, some results well, we, we obtain. This is a classical uh, uh, one photon UV lithography. We are using here a photosensitive matrix. So you can see that uh, we are able to do some some classical grating with a one micron period. Of course, because of this, there are some nanoparticles, uh, we can guess that uh, some nanoparticles are remaining. Um, with that kind of photosensitive matrix, we are also able to do some uh, two photon stereotography to obtain a, a other kind of device, three dimensional uh, devices also. So the, the size is not exactly the same for sure, but it is possible to do that. And uh, with other kind of matrix, much more mineral with no photosensitivity, uh, we can use nano imprint lithography to obtain uh, one dimensional or two dimensional uh, uh, system with a period it is one micron. Um, and also the composite as it is a liquid, it is able to fill some slits. So we were able here to, to fill some slits which uh, the, the, the dimension is really less than uh, 500 nanometer. So we have the nano composite here and we have silicon nitride grating here. Uh, and we were also able, we will see that to, to, to fill some uh, direct opal to obtain a 3D uh, uh, photonic crystals. If we now go to the magnetic nanoparticles, we can also finally tune also the, the the properties. So they are crystallized before using, before being used in the soil gel. So we do not apply any thermal annealing for the crystallization during the process. It is made before. So the integration is a low process, uh, low temperature process, sorry. And uh, we are using cobalt ferrite nanoparticles and they are interesting because they have two main area with a high Faraday rotation effect. And uh, we are much more working in that area for infrared here. Uh, and you can also tune the magnetic behavior of uh, the, 
the system by playing with the nanoparticle size. Uh, for example, um, you have here the Faraday effect, so the hysteresis loop, uh, very, for two different kind of uh, size, sorry, of uh, nanoparticles. And at room temperature for that materials, the, the size is so important. So you can really change the remnants or the hysteresis, uh, uh, the coercitive field, sorry. And uh, another interesting thing that you can also modify the hysteresis loop by applying a magnetic field during the coating. We are during the coating, you withdraw the, the substrate. If you apply a magnetic field during the, the gelation, you can orientate all the nanoparticles and you can increase, for example, here, the remnant uh, value. It means that you have a permanent uh, Faraday effect with that kind of materials. And of course, if you increase the quantity of, the, of particles in, 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 in the sol gel, a solution you increase for sure uh, the uh, the Faraday effect and we can reach that kind of uh, value for about 20 percent of uh, nanoparticles so we are as a, as you may we are starting we are starting from nanoparticles to do that kind of composite and finally we have used that in different kind of, of device I will develop now so the first device we have worked with is uh, that kind of uh, integrated magneto optical converter on glass. So we, are, we have done that with our colleagues in Grenoble and they are working on uh, ion exchange wave guides on glass. So they are doing uh, ion exchange wave guides. We have uh, do the deep coating uh, of this uh, wave guide to obtain a layer of a magneto optical layer on top of a wave guide. And in, in that uh, situation, when you apply a, a longitudinal magnetic field, you can, op you can obtain hazard Faraday rotation. This is a coupling between the T and the TM mode. And it is a bit limited by the modal barrier functions of, of, of both, but in that system, uh, the mode is shared between the, the guide in glass and in the magnet optical layer. And if you play with the thickness, with the refractive index, you, you can play with the quantity of fill which is in the magnetoptical magnet layer, and it plays a role on the final result. So we are able to, to measure some uh, rotation and even goes to uh, uh, 45 degree of uh, rotation. Um, I, I, I have not the curve because it is so noisy when, when this is this value because we have a absorption. What is, it is important finally in that work is that uh, we have exactly the same merit factor before the integration and at the end of the integration. I mean, the integration does not give a decrease of the merit factor. For sure, cobalt ferrite nanoparticles are not the best uh, nanoparticles uh, to, to do that kind of device. It will be better, for example, to start from YIG or cyan substitute YIG nanoparticles uh, to put them in the sol gel and finally obtain a very efficient uh, uh, devices. But these uh, works have shown that the integration through this method does not, uh, does not give uh, additional losses, in fact. Uh, then we have the work on this kind of device. This is a 3D magnetophotonic crystal. So starting from the direct topol of polystyrene sphere, this is a self-organization method to, to obtain this kind of, uh, of a 3D photonic crystal. And then just putting this, this uh, direct topol in a solar solution, the solar gel is able to go in to fill all the slits. And finally, you can remove the polystyrene balls and you obtain this inverse opal. Uh, so you can see that we have different than here. Um, and this is a, so uh, the composite is everywhere here with the nanoparticles inside. And it, it, uh, it is a, uh, a photonic crystal based on the, the period we have here at the beginning. And this is a way to enhance the magnetoptical effect. Um, uh, when we have photonic crystal, you, you obtain a photonic band gap. 
Again, this is a transmittance as function of the wavelength. You have a, here a photonic band gap. And it is well known that uh, on the edge of the photonic band gap, you can have an increase of light matter interaction. So you have here the curve for the monolayer, the classical monolayer. And for uh, the, the other one, you can see that we have this increase of the uh, Faraday effect at the edge of the band gap. Uh, based on this work, we have then moved to a, a planar system with a, uh, this is all dielectric one dimensional magnetic surfaces. So this is quite the same idea. You, you start with a template from silicon nitrite and you just infiltrate the template with the magnetic films. So finally, you obtain a photonic crystal membrane uh, with a magnetic activity. Um, so you have here the band gap for each polarization, T and Tm, and we have tried to match here the, the, the resonant transmission for uh, the normal incidence. So you can look that as a photonic crystal membrane, or you can also explain that you, you have a guided mode resonance filter uh, with this kind of, that kind of divide. So when you are measuring the transmittance as function of the wavelength, you have this here, the dip here for both uh, polarization. And uh, we have a measure on that membrane, all the, we can say all the magnetic optical effects uh, varying the magnetic field direction, uh, Faraday, longitudinal and transverse care effects. And we have uh, finally shown that uh, we were able to enhance the Faraday effect here in the area of the transmittance dip compared to the Faraday uh, effect of uh, a normal film, a classical film. So we are able to enhance the Faraday effect. Uh, this is the same for the longitudinal care effect when you are varying the, the incidence angle. And also a slight, a slight uh, enhancement of the TMOC. This is not uh, so, so huge. But it was interesting to show that uh, with that kind of uh, um, photonic crystal membrane, we can in fact enhance every magnetic effect that can be interesting in fact uh, in order to, to have a, a sensing method for every direction of the magnetic field. Because some of uh, the effects are related to the polarization, some are related to the intensity of the light. Uh, if we go to continue to, to, to study the, the TMOC effect, finally, uh, we have done a much more simple device, which is only a, a film of the composite here on a substrate, glass substrate, and we have uh, used a photoresist grating on it. With the micron period, uh, we inject light in this system. This is a guided mode resonance filter, so you have a, a, a peak here of reflectance, okay, you have different peak of reflectance varying the incidence angle. And when you apply a transverse magnetic field, you can shift this resonance. And finally, you obtain what is called the TMOC. You just compare the both magnitude of, uh, of, uh, of the intensity. And in that, with that kind of uh, device, what is interesting is that the Resonance quality factor is really high. In fact, it is really higher than what can be obtained in magnetoplasmonic uh, uh, device because, in fact, the loss are very low. This is an old dielectric system, and the quality of the film is very good, so we do not enhance loss. So we have a very good, uh, this is, we can say, the best value at the time for that kind of, uh, of device, for sure, uh, of quality factor. And based on this really good quality factor of resonance, we were able to show that we can reach 20% uh, of uh, TMOC. So we can shift the resonance, the intensity of the resonance by 20%. So this is really interesting for uh, sensing uh, application. In the meantime, what was quite surprising for us is that uh, on that kind of device, uh, we have spent some time to discuss that with <laughs> Matthias for the PhD thesis of, of Flo was work on that. In that we 
we could observe a different behavior when we were varying the wavelength. So sometimes we have the classical odd behavior as function of the field. This is what uh, we are expecting with a, a non-reciprocity, but we see that for all the other wavelengths, we have an even effect. So in that kind of device, we obtain both effect. One is a TMO, classical one, non-reciprocal, and another one, which is a reciprocal effect. And what is strange is that uh, we cannot obtain by classical simulation if you are uh, just uh, putting in the simulation the classical uh, eye of, of diagonal element. You do not obtain this, uh, this effect, uh, which exists close to the TMOC here. And it is also observed for TE polarization. And uh, finally, uh, we also observe it in uh, magnetoptical optical waveguide in uh, magnetoptical optical fibers. So at the time we are attributing this effect to us, uh, to the magnetostriction of uh, the cobalt ferrite nanoparticles, which uh, this material is known to have a large magnetostrictive effect. And we think that when we apply the field, we have this striction, which plays a role in the optical anisotropy. And we are able to, to obtain this effect when we had here, another modulation effect based uh, on the film. The last type of device is a, a device uh, made of uh, around the uh, uh, optical fiber. So we have used that kind of fiber. This is suspended core fiber here. So in this system, uh, light is propagating in the core here. So you have hair all around. And the idea was to functionalize this kind of fiber with the magnetoptical uh, nanocomposite. So this is, this is a, uh, an interesting uh, work made by, by uh, my colleagues. And uh, the idea is to put the materials, oh, sorry, you have the fiber here, which is in this uh, container with uh, the solution solution is here. And using pressure, you just push the materials in, in fact, the fiber, then the material is withdrawn, so it is removed. And what we obtain is that on each side of the core, you obtain a coating of here, the materials, which is about uh, 300 nanometers of, of materials. And finally, uh, you, you have the propagation of the modes, so the, the modes, optical mode is much more concentrated in the silica inside for sure, but a part of the mode is in the magnet optical layer. So when you are measuring the Faraday effect in the functional fiber, you can obtain a large Faraday rotation. Uh, the black curve is here, the undop fiber, the classical SEMF -E sorry fiber, you have a very slight Faraday effect uh, in that kind of uh, material. But when you play with uh, the, the materials here, you, if you change, in fact, the, the speed of the, the withdrawing here, you, you play with the thickness, and finally, you play with the interaction, and finally, with the effect. So we could reach that kind of, uh, of variation of uh, the Faraday, several. Uh, 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 several degree, uh, 10 degree, and so on. So uh, it is also interesting for, for, for sensing. Um, what was also interesting that uh, my colleagues were able to, to add a, a bright grating on the core of the fiber to work in reflection. So they, they could measure the, the Faraday effect uh, at the reflection. And as our colleagues in the lab working on, uh, on the fiber are really involved in X-ray radiation, gamma radiation, and so on. We have tried to 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 test this uh, this this device uh, under X-ray radiation, and it is clear that it is really immune. So it is really interesting for uh, sensing, for example, in harsh uh, environments. So uh, this is what we have done, and. Uh, what well, we are planning to do uh, now, several ideas we have. Uh, so as mentioned, uh, 
by Beatrice just before. Uh, we are planning to, to, to do the, this uh, uh, isol uh, circulator and to use the composite to, to fill the, the state of the uh, magneto B plasmonic isolator. And so this is uh, one point about the, the integrated device. And another point that we would like to, to work on is uh, to work on that kind of uh, surface, surface which combine chirality and magneto optical activity. And uh, the final uh, aim can be to uh, work on enantiomer selectivity. Uh, we know that in the, to do that, we, we need to enhance the surface chiral field, but in terms of materials, it is sure that what we need is to increase the refractive index of the materials. You have a, a very efficient uh, surface here. So we have to work on the solar preparation to increase the refractive index. And it is a so challenge of modeling. So this is why we, uh, we have has to Matthias to help us to, to work on that kind of uh, modeling. And uh, last point I wanted to mention because we are talking about uh, multi-physics uh, in, in this workshop. So uh, we are starting a new, a new project. I, I don't know what, uh, what it will uh, give for sure, but we want to combine uh, now the uh, magnetic hyperthermia of uh, the magnetic nanoparticles with the optical properties. So the basic idea is to apply an alternative magnetic field to play with the heating power of the nanoparticles and to increase the temperature of the film and combine that with the vanadium dioxide, uh, which has a thermochromic behavior, uh, changing from dielectric to metal at the same time temperature. And we want to play with the uh, the alternative magnetic field to finally change the property of uh, vanadium dioxide as films. But in fact, the long-term vision is much more to try to do some localized heating and finally to obtain a, a localized modulation of the vanadium dioxide uh, playing with the composites, but also perhaps in the future to add directly the magnetic nanoparticles in the vanadium dioxide to obtain the direct heating in the material. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Francois. Um, I didn't see any questions from the online audience. Any? No? Well, just type it if you have one. Yeah. Uh, Nicolas? Thank you for the very interesting uh, talk. Uh, so the, the, the particles, you said it's uh, co cobalt uh, ferrite, right? So yes, uh, magnetostructive. So you said that there is an effect uh, upon shining the light. So does that mean that, that there is a stress that is created that could explain, or st well, stress strain, the same thing, but... Uh, we don't know exactly what, uh, what the effect is. Sorry. We don't know exactly what, what is the effect, but this is, uh, yes, this is the idea. Uh, uh, because of the magnetostriction inside the magnetic nanoparticles, we think that it, it induces a sort of uh, stress. Uh, and finally, it induces uh, optical barrier functions. And um, this is what we, uh, this is the option at the time. Uh, we have to, to confirm by uh, doing this kind of measurement as a function of the temperature, because the behavior of uh, the uh, of diagonal effect, the classical one, and that of the magnetostriction effect is not the same as a function of the temperature. So we need to, to, to check, but it is true that when we are adding another terms here, a classical anisotropy, we are able to explain that effect. So at the time, this is our explanation. Follow up question. And then on the same order of ID, so, so if, you, if, you, if you can apply a stress, uh, you, you, theoretically, you should be able to some sort of, some sort of control of other magneto optic properties, right? Or if you put the film on PMNBT, for instance, 
Is it something that could be done? You would like to, the idea is to put the, yeah. put the film on a yeah. hydroelectric something. Yeah. Yeah. In, in a way to, to confirm that this is the yeah. same. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, for sure it's a good idea. Yeah. And it, yes, it's a good idea to confirm that we have uh, that also. Yeah, so it's, it's not sure. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm answering something completely stupid, but it's not sure that the stress will put itself on the particles and not entirely on the sol gel matrix. Maybe it's just the matrix that is stressing and then not the particles. There was another question from Roma. So related to that point, um, could you use a nickel uh, base ferrite? Because I guess then the magnetostriction effect should be much larger, no? Um, yeah, why not? Uh, I, but uh, nickel ferrite? Yeah. OK. In fact, uh, to tell you the, the truth exactly, we don't know if it's uh, if we want this effect. <laughs> yeah. But perhaps because, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, no, it's a good, good question. Uh, finally, it may be interesting to have this effect to finally obtain the measurement of each component of the field, because the, we have different uh, interplay between the the. The, the effect, the TMOC, the polarization effect, and this uh, reciprocal one, which is not the same depending on the, on the component of the field. So perhaps we will, we, what we are planning is to go further and to understand much more this effect to finally obtain a measurement of the three components of the field uh, uh, with only, we can say, uh, one measurement. So we will go further on that. Uh, the, the difficulty also, when we want to change the materials, is to have some nanoparticles. And to be able to put that in the solar gel solution and to remain uh, as a random distribution of nanoparticles without any aggregates. And it is not so, so, so easy to do. We have tried in the past, I can say, uh, plenty of different kinds of particles. And um, we are able to use cobalt ferrite. We are uh, also uh, able to use magamite, but the other particles are quite difficult. And one question, uh, because the, so the Faraday coefficient that you mentioned, you get then when you apply quite large magnetic field, uh, like, uh, yeah. And it's not an issue for this type of application to need such a large, uh, field because i guess also maybe you could there are softer part nanoparticles again than cobalt ferrite uh yes the the effect i mentioned i don't know why it is no so uh, the value i've mentioned for sure this is a saturation effect okay it's close to 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 one tesla uh Yes, uh, this is perhaps not, we don't really need this value. And, but what is interesting is that you can work with the remanent, remanent effect with that kind of, uh, of particles. But uh, it is, in, it is a good, for example, this kind of uh, permanent effect for optical isolator. You, don't, you do not need to, to, to integrate the magnet because uh, in the system uh, of uh, isolator, you always need to integrate magnets. So that can be, that can be good, but cobalt ferrite are not the best for, in terms of uh, merit factor. Yeah, regarding, regarding that, you mentioned uh, the, the uh, dream of uh, doing this with the uh, uh, YIG uh, nanoparticles, but um, I, don't, I have no idea. I'm not a specialist at all. I don't know. Is that uh, realistic? Can, can, do we know how to synthesize YIG particles? Uh, YIG particles he is giving headache for to, to plenty of people. But uh, um, yes, my colleagues in uh, I have not mentioned perhaps, but uh, my colleagues in uh, in Paris in Phoenix, uh, 
Uh, Sophie is working on that. She, she, she has just starting a PhD uh, work to, to do that. So it is not easy to do because uh, as when you are doing the film, you, you need to apply this high temperature. So it is easy to, to do some uh, nanoparticles as co-precipitation method. You, it is easy, easy to obtain some nanoparticles, but this is not, uh, they are not uh, crystallized. And when you apply the high temperature, they, they, they are giving large aggregates. So they are different way. You can do uh, uh, another way, which is to start from YAG, YAG sits, and then you do the crystallization around the YAG seed. So you, you start with the seeds of uh, uh, five nanometer of YAG, and then you, you can promote the crystallization of YIG on that kind of nanoparticle. Yeah. This is the way, yes, it's sort of caution. This is the way the Sophie is following at the time to, to realize these particles, but we are confident. Okay. It is more than 10 years that we are waiting for that, but we are confident. <laughs> That's very nice. 